welcome to my new channel, Painted Fairy, um, <laughs> where we're going to be discussing more artists, pretty much. <laughs> more amazing artists who deserve way more recognition for their incredible works. I hope I'll be able to shed some light on these phenomenal painters. So, first up, we have Marion Stokes, an incredible painter that I came across earlier this year at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. In her paintings, Marion Stokes explores numerous different themes, ranging from mythology and folklore to religious to portraiture and explores landscapes as well. Marion Stokes was born in 1855 in Austria and she studied in Munich under Linden Schmidt, who was a German history painter. Marion Stokes also very much enjoyed the work of Jules Bastien Lepage, who was a French painter associated closely with the naturalist movement. Marion Stokes painted a lot in the countryside and she was very interested in portraiture. She exhibited in the Royal Academy in 1885. Marion was married to a painter named Adrian Scott Stokes and the two of them would often travel to Skagen in Denmark to the Skagen Painters Art Colony where they were friends with Michael and Anna Ancher, both of whom were also incredible artists. <laughs> Stokes was also a member of the Newland School and she and her husband lived in St. Ives in England from around 1900. Marion was very influenced by the pre-Raphaelites and eventually she began to paint with tempera and gesso. She was also an associate of the Royal Society of Painters in Watercolour I couldn't find her watercolours online, so if anyone could source some for me, please let me know. I would absolutely love to see them. Marianne's husband, Adrian, was an English painter, which is why I suppose they ended up living in England. And I suppose they must have really supported each other in this. I think that's just the most amazing and wonderful thing. I love that. The first painting that we'll be discussing is Saint Elizabeth Working for the Poor, which was painted around 1920 and was the first painting of hers that I saw in the art gallery of New South Wales. It's quite a small painting, only 60 by 40 centimetres, and it's oil on canvas. The painting itself is quite flat, there's not a great amount of texture, which I think really brings out the still feeling of the painting and you can really just have a look at how subtly everything is painted here. It reminds me a lot of the religious paintings that were done during the Renaissance, especially in the use of perspective and the domed windows. I'm also a huge fan of the way that she designed the drape. This next painting is The Frog Prince. It's, it was done around 1890 and the dimensions are 51 by 51 centimeters. It was done in oil on canvas. I really love this painting so much. I love the composition of it and just how light and high key all of the colours are. It just goes to show that you don't need a high amount of contrast and crazy colours to make an absolutely beautiful painting and often I find that the more subtle paintings are the ones that I get drawn to the most because they convey this feeling of a, almost being in a dream I love medieval tales, so obviously I really had to include this one. Uh, the medieval, the French medieval tale, Aucassin and Nicolette. Just, just look at it. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. It's so subtle and the really muted colours. 
the silhouettes of the trees in the background and the subtlety of the drape, the shine of the armor. I love this painting. <laughs> And here's a sneak peek on one of Adrian's works called Autumn in the Mountains. Anyway, I'll be making a future video definitely on Adrian, a part two to this, because I just find artist couples extremely interesting and just the way that they influence each other and how you can see quite, quite interesting similarities between their work very often. So we'll be discussing that in a future video. <laughs>